Well, today we got Sifu Ronald Bender. He's a, a Kung Fu master, a practitioner of the martial arts, and he's really deep into the uh, spiritual Kung Fu stuff. I mean, you know, that stuff that the majority of us today, especially out here in the United States, find very creepy and we don't much get into, but um, those guys are out there. There's so many of them. You know, and uh, today I got somebody that really does practice the, uh, the spiritual aspect of Kung Fu. I mean, some of the stuff that you're going to hear him say, you might find um, kind of out there, maybe far-fetched. I don't know. You know, you guys can comment on it, say whatever you want. I was, I myself, I'm not going to lie, was a little bit creeped out. <laughs> but he is a cool guy, and I like his stories about... Um, his former street fighting days, you know, he was somebody that trained really hard in the physical martial arts and he was out there in the street, you know, protecting people and helping people and taking up all challenges, you know what I mean? So anyway, Ronald Bender's coming up. This is Alex the Maverick Colazzo. Thank you for listening. You have just entered the Mavericks Dojo. down to some of the things that I, I really appreciated about martial arts mm -hmm. was, it, it was it learned uh, the respect and you have uh, you know self-confidence built in the martial arts training and you also have you know the uh, the ability to you know contain yourself in a situation as where someone tries to pick a fight and you basically are able to talk them down uh, they teach you a lot that you should just ignore the person and never to use your martial arts unless it's absolutely uh, necessary the only choice that you have yeah. you know and one of the things that I was uh, trying to get across to people that some people are interested in, and that's your focus point. Um, focus point to me is where you uh, conjure up all your inner chi and you visualize it. Uh, a lot of people have it, you know, where it comes out the two inches of their knuckles when they punch and out the palm of their hand when they do strikes. But uh, rarely do they teach a focal point on uh, the inner chi, and that's something where you visualize a round circle in front of you and it could be any color at first and what you want to achieve is a nice bright red color uh there's times where people said oh i got so mad i saw red well that red is the the cheat you just have to condense it down to a focal point and when when you can do that and it takes hours of meditation uh you should be able to open your eyes and still uh, visualize this round red circle and once you can do so you should be able to move that circle at any point of the body of your attacker and you become one with the red dot and that's the whole object objective is to become one with that dot that you've placed on their head or their chest or their ribs and you have to believe in that so strongly I mean, it's almost a part of you being gullible to where, hey, I, I have to become one with this or I will I will die, <laughs> right, right. so to speak. That's a little strong. It's a little intense yeah. to think something of that nature. Have you but, used it before? Is that, how you, how, is that what you used to get uh, to win fights? Because you were telling me the other day that you were a, a scrappy fellow. You used to like getting into uh, uh, situations. <laughs> at a party somewhere and we would have uh, back in those days there used to be a lot of parties where people were drinking alcohol in the parks and, and uh, now all the parks are closed down but yeah we would be out there in the park and there's always a, a bully picking on a weekend and uh, a lot of people knew who I was and they would come and get me and uh, I can remember one time uh, uh, this guy uh, was just coming up to me asking me for some help I'm like what's wrong he's like they're beating my friend to death and I rushed over there and, and sure enough they were just stomping on this guy's head into the blacktop and just making hamburger out of him and uh, I come up to him and they started 
pointing a finger and yelling at me and uh, I just took complete control and command of the situation. Uh, I just didn't even break stride when I was walking up to him. I just threw out a kick to the stomach. The guy bent down and gave him a good old punch and he went flying. And the second guy looked at me as if he was going to attack me and I struck him the nose, broke his nose. And the third guy was just there looking at me and looking like he wanted to jump into the fight. But when I punched him, you know, he went flying over the hood of a car. Wow. You know? And yeah, it's just powerful when you can uh, obtain, you know, the chi level uh, so you can execute uh, a lot of the movements that you're learning, in, you know, in your uh, dojo. So I was able to do this through a friend uh, who we used to meditate a lot with. His name was Jim Morrison. Uh, and uh, not, not Jim Morrison that everybody thinks of, but uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting because for some reason there was just this strong sense of aura where I can walk into a room, and that's another thing about your focal point, is you, when you have that, you can turn up the volume on it, and you can get into a place where you know if there's bad feelings or feelings where people are angry and stuff like that. It's like an early warning. It just can help you stay out of a situation rather than walking into a bad situation. And uh, I don't think anybody teaches the focal point. Uh, I've, I haven't run to anybody so far. Most everybody's teaching, you know, pretty much what people want to learn. Uh, and I think that's great. Did, did, you did you learn it on your? Did you learn it on your own, or who and, taught you this? Uh, we, I learned it from, uh, uh, like I said, this Jim Morrison guy who uh, who used to do a lot of meditation. We used to meditate uh, so much that um, we would have almost an outer body experience in this meditation that we would we would do, and uh, at times we would sit in front of a a spool of rope and we would tie it around our waist so that we had a way to, to get back to our human flesh. Now that sounds crazy, wow. but uh, to, to be able to meditate and, and have your inner body, you know, go out of yourself, uh, you, you have to have a way to get back. And that's what the rope was all about. But that's how deep of a meditation we would have. It would be that intense. So this is—is this, is, is this uh, like a spiritual thing? This is, or this is like the imagination? Does this start with the imagination? Like, how does this work? Well, how does it work? Is it really does start within your mind, within your inner imagination, and uh, and it, and I take I take you uh, probably a couple of years to get uh, that serious of a meditation, and. <clears throat> And I think it's just, oh, you just got to be uh, gullible enough to believe in it, you know, to achieve it, you know. Uh, it's a, it's not something that the average student would, you know, shoot for. It's more of a black belt material is, is to where you, you want to be uh, stronger or better or faster uh, or more powerful. It's almost a, uh, almost in a way, I would say it's a, a negative kung fu i don't know if anybody's heard of that or like you know the dark side of kung fu hmm. uh, which i don't teach or nobody teaches you know it's not a, a very uh nice thing to uh learn uh the negative side of kung fu but